So far, we've inspected the water walls and the superheaters and the reheaters. Well, it's time now to inspect two more boiler components, the economizer and the bottom ash hopper. Economizers are affected by general boiler problems, overheating, support failure, excessive ash accumulation, and refractory failure. Since the economizer is a tube type component, it's also subject to tube thinning and soot blower problems. Excessive ash accumulation is a particular problem in the economizer. Most economizer tubes have fins or gill rings that can become blocked with ash more easily than bare tubes. There's another problem. Economizers are subject to accumulations of unburned fuel. Now, this is a fire hazard and is potentially explosive. When checking for ash blockage in the economizer, be sure to see if the ash includes unburned fuel. The economizer should also be checked for erosion, corrosion, general surface deterioration, problems with old repairs, problems with construction welds, and evidence of leakage. Economizer tubes are especially prone to corrosion because the economizer area has the lowest temperatures of the components we've discussed. So condensation is more likely to form in the economizer. Condensation leads to corrosion, especially if the boiler fuel has sulfur in it. Corrosion often shows up in the row of tubes where the hot gases leave the economizer. Comparing the outlet row of tubes with that of the inlet row of tubes should give you some idea of how much corrosion has taken place throughout the economizer. To inspect the economizer, techniques are used that are similar to those for inspecting the superheater. Like the superheater, economizers have tubes packed so close together that it's difficult to see the tubes within the bundle. Inspection of the inside tubes is generally made by looking down the lanes between the tubes. And here too, closer inspection can be accomplished by using a long-handled inspection mirror. As a last resort, the tubes may be spread apart to provide access to the inside of the bundle. It's important to look at the inlet and the outlet row of tubes because they're accessible and their condition will give you an idea about the condition of the inside tubes. Another component that requires inspection is the bottom ash hopper. Now, The bottom ash hopper must be examined for five problems that affect the refractory inside the ash hopper. These are the effects of rapid temperature change, ash buildup, erosion, surface deterioration, and problems in previously repaired areas. The bottom ash hopper can have refractory problems caused by the bottom ash that collects there. The ash is very hot when it enters the hopper. Normally it is cooled quickly by water in the hopper. However, this water must be drained every once in a while to get rid of the accumulated ash. While the hopper is empty, hot ash can heat the refractory on the inside of the hopper. This problem is made worse by the sudden temperature change that occurs when the ash hopper is refilled with water. The combination of heating and then sudden cooling of the ash hopper can lead to spalling and cracking of the refractory. Ash buildup is another problem in the bottom ash hopper. All bottom ash should be removed from the hopper when it is drained. Some ash may remain in the hopper if the spray nozzles are misaligned. If some ash does remain in the hopper, note it during inspection. The remaining ash will have to be removed manually. Early detection and correction of a problem within the ash hopper will avoid repeated manual ash removal. Another problem that can show up in the ash hopper is erosion of the refractory. Anytime water flows over refractory, there's the possibility of erosion. Be sure to check the general surface condition of all of the refractory inside the ash hopper. Things to look for include spalling, cracking, and erosion. Also, if you can see refractory anchoring devices at the refractory surface, the refractory is either badly worn away or was improperly installed. Previously repaired areas must also be checked when inspecting the ash hopper. Refractory breakdown in the bottom ash hopper is a fairly common occurrence. 
An ash hopper's refractory may be repaired many times, so inspect the refractory to make sure it's holding up. Four more areas in the ash hopper are concerns during an inspection. The boiler bottom seal, the ash spray pipes and nozzles, the ash gate, and the ash hopper inspection doors. There are only general areas in the ash hopper, the, the ones that I've mentioned here, so some boilers will have even more places that require inspection. The boiler bottom seal is a seal between the boiler and the ash hopper. The boiler bottom seal isolates the furnace from its surroundings. Two typical seal types are the corrugated seal and the sliding seal. The corrugated seal type allows the boiler wall to expand. The corrugated seal is accordion-like, an accordion made of corrosion-resistant steel. The sliding seal type is an overlapping metal joint, which allows the boiler wall to expand. This type of seal uses water to prevent any flow of gas into or out of the boiler. Boiler bottom seals should be inspected for the five basic common problems we discussed earlier. Overheating, ash buildup, erosion, general surface deterioration, and problems with old repairs. In addition, the metal parts of the seal may be corroded. Your inspection should verify that the seal between the ash hopper and the boiler is tight. Also, there must be nothing to prevent the expansion of the water wall. If you have any question regarding how your boiler's bottom seal works, consult your boiler manufacturer's instruction book. Most ash hoppers use pressurized water to stir up the bottom ash being removed from the boiler. This helps get all the ash out of the boiler. Pipes and nozzles are used to direct the water spray. You must inspect these pipes and spray nozzles for ash blockage and misalignment caused by clinkers falling on them. The nozzles are aligned correctly if they direct their spray towards the, air, uh, the ash gate, that is, where the ash leaves the boiler. And the nozzles should not spray directly at the refractory. That'll wear it away. The bottom ash hopper's ash gate should be inspected for proper operation by opening and closing it several times. The ash gate is underwater most of the time, so it has its own seals to prevent leakage. When you inspect the ash gates, these seals should be checked for any signs of leakage. These include corrosion, nicks, tears, burn spots, and torn gaskets. Like the ash gate, some of the ash hopper inspection doors are usually underwater. These must also be examined for leakage. All the inspection doors should be checked to verify that they're in good working order. Well, we've now discussed inspections of the boiler's economizer and ash hopper area. You've seen some of the potential problems. You should have a pretty good idea of what to look for when inspecting the inside of a boiler. When your inspection is finished, there's one final procedure you must never forget. Be absolutely sure that no one is left inside the boiler. Now, this may sound obvious, but it's truly a matter of life and death. Be positive that no one is left inside that boiler after inspection. Also, before putting the boiler back into normal operation, clear away scaffolding, tools, rags, anything else you may have brought inside. In short, after inside inspection, empty the boiler of everything, people, equipment, trash. Now that's the last step for inspection inside the boiler. Still to come, is the inspection of the outside of the boiler, which we'll discuss after you take some time to go over all of this material in your text.